Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I thought that today we would do an altar tour. Now, I will explain what an altar is for those of you who are not into witchcraft. I know that I haven't done any witchcraft specific videos on my channel as of yet, even though I have mentioned it a couple of times. Um, but some of my friends said that they would be interested in seeing an altar tour. I guess that's maybe something that's popular in the witchcraft, wicca, etc. community on YouTube, so I thought that I would make one. And it seemed like a perfect day to make one because today I went for a walk in the woods and I found a lovely stick that has now been integrated into my altar. And if you're confused by me saying that I brought home a stick, a lot of people that are into witchcraft uh, generally end up picking up items from nature such as rocks, stones, seashells, sticks, uh, any, anything that can be used um, in their altar or anything that can be uh, kind of a decorative thing. Um, so I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Um, if you do have an altar and if you do practice witchcraft, uh, you might be somebody who uses different items during different seasons. So uh, spring, summer, fall, winter, you might want to have different items on your altar representing those seasons. Uh, you might make sort of a cornucopia during fall or put little kind of um, pumpkins or gourds on your altar or leaves even. Um, in the winter you might have pine needles, pine cones, things like that. Um, right now I am not living in my own place. So my altar is kind of a mishmash of things that I'm currently using, things that I always have on there, such as uh, votive candles that represent uh, both light and dark, or in some people's cases, I guess it would be the god and goddess. Um, but yes, so I'm not in my own home, so it's a little bit of a mishmash of things at the moment, but I do have some things on it that currently represent spring, which is the season that we're in in this part of the world right now. So I guess for those of you who aren't entirely sure what an altar is for, it is usually somewhere where you practice magic. Um, you can cast a circle and sit in front of your altar and you can do spell work, uh, you can do meditation, all that good stuff. So typically that is kind of what it is. Now you don't have to have one altar, your whole house can be an altar. I am very much into cottage witchery, which uh, is kind of like turning your whole entire living space into a magical place. So everywhere you look, there's probably going to be crystals, uh, bessons, brooms, stuff like that. So kind of your whole entire living space would be representative of that. But, uh, and I was working on that in my house, but unfortunately I am not there anymore. So this is not the case with my current altar. Uh, but yeah, you can have multiple altars. You can just have one main one. You can kind of spread stuff out throughout your house. Uh, but yes, basically it is somewhere where usually you would meditate or do magic or spells. Uh, a lot of altars typically have candles for different reasons. Uh, as I mentioned, there's sometimes a representation of the god and goddess in two different colored candles. You might be using colored candles for different kinds of spell work if you do candle magic. Um, you probably have a cauldron or like a mini cauldron on there. Um, sometimes it's good for putting water in or burning things in and then usually some kind of incense burner or something like that. Um, I also have a teeny tiny besom, which is just for sweeping away negativity before I do any kind of spell work or magic or ritual work. And that is basically it. And then I just have a collection of stuff that, you know, means stuff to me and, you know, different crystals and stuff like that. So um, for anyone who is curious, I did mention it before, but I am not Wiccan. I don't follow any particular path. Um, I am constantly learning because that is a big part of witchcraft is constantly expanding your knowledge of uh, spirituality and how different people practice magic in different parts of the world. So basically uh, right now I am just an eclectic witch. Uh, as I said, I do like cottage witch as a term, but I am not living my best cottage witch life at the moment because I am stuck at home. So. Without further ado, I am going to show you my altar. Okay, so here it is. Uh, this is my current altar. It's just kind of a little... Sorry about the lighting. Also, there's my cat. Hi, baby. Oh, she's kind of going nuts. So here is my current altar. Uh, it is where I keep my reading materials. It is where I keep my tarot cards, a uh, bunch of stuff. So it's kind of an all-in-one. It kind of has everything that I would possibly need. Uh, so if we start at the bottom, here is a little collection of books that I have on Wicca, witchcraft, magic, 
and my tarot deck, which is the Marigold Tarot, which is actually uh, a tarot deck that was created by somebody in Toronto. Behind that, I have some Madame Phoenix Bed of Roses spray, which is just very calming for people with anxiety, and it also incites feelings of love if you want to spray that on your bed. I also have this uh, Happy Home Blessing Spray. It is also a product of Madame Phoenix. She's based out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And she makes all kinds of magical things. She makes, uh, you know, magic floor wash. She makes candles, bath salts, uh, just tons of stuff, perfumes. Uh, this is my pestle and mortar, which has only been used a couple of times thus far, but it's good for grinding up herbs uh, if you want to use them in ritual or anoint candles with them, things like that. Um, I do have some runes that were given to me by a friend, but I have not delved into runes yet, so I don't actually know what I am doing with those. Sorry, my computer just made a noise. So this is a hedge witch guide, which goes over different kinds of plants that grow in Canada. And I really need to look into it because I have been going into the woods a lot and trying to identify different things. And I do have an app for that. It's called iNaturalist. My friend pointed me in the direction of that app. It's kind of fantastic. But that book also has just some really nice drawings and different things uh, that you can do with different plants. Um, back here, there is a cache of incense sticks. And that basically covers the bottom shelf. Now, there is also a book missing from here. It's one that I'm currently reading, which is called, I want to say, Dark Goddess Craft. I'm kind of going through a little spiritual journey at the moment, so that's been really interesting to read. Also to note, I keep a uh, quartz crystal on top of my tarot deck. Uh, supposedly, that just kind of keeps all of the energies uh, good in there, and so it's important usually to uh, cleanse your crystals and, you know, uh, recharge them either with water, in the sun, with sage, so that's something that I just keep on there just to keep all of the, all of the good energy in there, and it looks very pretty right now on camera. So the second shelf, hi there, uh, trigger warning if you don't like dead animals, I guess. Um, these are ethically sourced skulls. I have a friend who's a little bit of a scavenger, and he finds skulls. Um, this is a little incense jar that one of my witchy friends made for me. I don't use it, I just keep it there decoratively. In the back there is my very first tarot set, which is uh, was given to me by my mom when I was maybe 13 or 14 years old. Um, I don't currently use it, I am using, as I said, the Marigold Tarot. I just connect with that one better. So, uh, this is a can't even see where I'm pointing here. This is a raccoon skull. This is a cat skull. Um, I love animals, but um, I find that skulls and bones are very interesting and they are ethically sourced, so I don't have a problem having these in my home. Uh, that's just a skull from Cuba that my sister got as a little gift for me. Uh, I have an abalone shell with a big piece of sage that my friend made and wrapped with rose petals. Uh, this is a piece of amber that came from Poland, and this is a, a cute little plastic cauldron that a bath bomb came in, so I just keep that there because it's adorable. Let's see what I can do with this. So the lighting is atrocious right now. The sun has pretty much just gone down, and the lighting in here is not professional grade. Um, so I will try to explain things as best I can. As you can see, my cat is scratching the carpet. As you can see, uh, at the back, I did put my stick that I found today. It's very lovely. Uh, of course, the shadow of this thing is getting in the way, so you can't actually see it properly. Super fail. Um, at the front here, I have a selenite wand. That is what I use currently because I do not have a wooden wand. I've been looking for one in the woods that I can turn into one, but I have not found a suitable one as of yet. I have crystals pretty much all around here. Also a seashell and a stone from a nearby stream. Um, I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with these. I can't actually remember what this one is called. I don't think it's pyrite. Uh, that is a big chunk of rose quartz. That is a smoky quartz. I have obsidian. I have bloodstone. There's labradorite over there, amethyst. And there's a... That's some kind of quartz. I think I just can't remember the one at the back. 
Um, this was an ancestral candle by Madame Phoenix um, that my friend got me for my birthday. It has since burned down and uh, it's looking lovely at the moment. This is just some artwork that I actually got with a foxblood order and it kind of, you know, went with the whole theme that I have going on here. So I just threw that up there. Sometimes I do that when I find different pieces of art that kind of resonate with what I'm doing. Uh, this is a cauldron, obviously. Like I said, you can put water in it, uh, you know, during full moons and stuff. It's probably kind of gross in there right now. You can also burn stuff in it, which is why it looks gross in there, because things have been burned in it. Uh, there are some pussy willows here and some dry daisies and then a little bit of an acorn. That's just kind of a spring thing, so those won't be there forever. Um, I always have two statues of Bast on my altar, a little one and a big one. And a Lilith candle, which I also bought from Madame Phoenix, which arrived yesterday, which is obviously for very specific work. Um, at the back, there is a sparkly little uh, pentagram. Uh, that is for safety. I believe that everyone should always have a pentagram on their altar because it is a protective symbol and that is why that is there all the way at the back. I have one black candle and one white candle. As I said, those are just representative of, you know, duality, light and dark. Um, there are seven day candles, so you can burn them for seven whole days without the danger of burning your house down, but I usually just kind of light them anytime I am doing something in particular. So they've lasted me a really long time, and those were from the Occult Shop, which is near, I believe, Bathurst and St. Clair in Toronto, Ontario. So it's Midtown Toronto where I got them, but it's a great store. They also do tarot readings there. Super cool place. Uh, as I mentioned, that's my Besom. That is just a little teeny tiny broom. You just use that for sweeping away a negativity before you are going to be doing something. And then this is one of my greatest thrift store finds. It is a incense burner, but I believe it's from a church. It looks like it is anyways. Um, you can't really see in there because again, the lighting is atrocious, but you basically can just burn cone incense in that. Uh, if you are looking at this thing at the back, it is a sigil that I drew. It is a Lilith sigil. Hi, it goes with the candle there. Uh, yes, that is blood on it. I'm not going to explain that further. So that is my entire altar and it is kind of super teeny tiny, but it does the trick. It does what it needs to do. Uh, it's looking a little bit cluttered right now, but I just don't really have space for everything right now, and I can't have everything being all over the house, so that's kind of why it's there. Oh, also, if you want to know why there is a purple cloth here, purple is a uh, good magical color. It is a royal color, um, and a lot of witches and people that do magic use purple because it is just kind of a sacred color. So it's a good thing to uh, put a purple cloth on your altar. So that is it. I hope that you enjoyed it. I am sorry that it was maybe a little bit brief. Um, that was about as much explanation as I wanted to go into with the items on there. They're kind of self-explanatory. Uh, there's lots of resources online if you want to see what kind of things you should be or you could uh, be putting on your altar and what you can use those things for. Uh, so mine is just very basic. Like I said, it's just kind of things that I'm currently using and uh, things uh, to burn incense in when I'm doing ritual and things like that. Um, if you want me to make another video like this, I can definitely do that if there is enough interest. And if you want to uh, have me talk about any of the books that were on my bookshelf or just talk about anything else related to witchcraft or magic that I might personally uh, be able to explain, then I will do that. Uh, leave comments down below. If you have made a altar tour video and you want other people to see that, uh, put it in the comments. Um, I would love to see other people's altar tours. Uh, they are very interesting to me. so. I would like to see those and hopefully one day there will be a much better, much more updated version of this with a proper camera, with ring lights, proper lighting, and um, yeah, we'll get there one day. So that is it for now. And if you like the video, please give it a like. And if you want to subscribe and help me grow my family, that would be amazing. And uh, if you could do that, that would be just awesome. So yeah, that is basically it. And I hope you have a blessed day.